On this episode of China Uncensored, super babies are the future. No, not that kind of super baby. The kind that's genetically engineered in China. Hi, welcome to China Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. It's an old story. A crazed scientist with delusions of grandeur embarks on ethically questionable research and creates a monstrosity. Of course, that's pure science fiction. I mean, no scientist could get research grants for that much money. No, you need the kind of money only a government has to bring together teams of scientists to work together to create ethically questionable monstrosities. And for that, China has the rest of the world beat. Did you know, and I kid you not, basketball star Yao Ming is the result of a selective breeding program set up under Mao Zedong over 50 years ago. But why leave it to clumsy methods like natural breeding when we stand on the cusp of a paradigm shift for humanity? Genetic engineering. This has huge implications. But while much of the world has barely begun to think about it, China has been spending big on research and development. At a major economics meeting earlier this year, the Chinese Communist Party announced a five-year plan that would allocate $41 billion to science, including genetic engineering research. In the near future, genetic engineering will have a huge impact on humankind. And I know, it's tempting to say, hey, that's great. But what's the future of this technology in the hands of the Chinese Communist Party, an authoritarian regime that kills its own citizens for their organs, controls the media, and silences dissent? I sat down with biotechnology policy expert Jamie Metzl to find out. Jamie, thank you for joining us on the show. Now, you speak a lot about uh, genetic engineering. For a lot of people, that's not a topic they think about. Uh, where is this technology now, and where is it going? Yeah, the way I like to describe it is that we are on the verge, and we've already begun a genetics revolution that's going to transform not just how we do medicine, not just how we make and babies and the nature of the babies we make, but our evolutionary path as a species. So in, in 2003 was the end of the Human Genome Project, which was the first sequencing of the human genome. And what that essentially did was turn biology into an information technology. So we as humans, we are made up of code. We are beginning to understand and read that code. And what that means is that our own biology will come to be seen uh, as being as hackable as information technology systems. So with these new technologies, we're going to be able to eliminate a lot of genetic diseases. We're going to live longer, healthier, more robust lives. Um, but there are some very big and very significant moral, ethical challenges, and we're going to need as a species and nationally and individually to find the right balance uh, between decisions uh, that we're making um, for our good and potential dangers that we may unleash that could harm us. Very good point. And so now let's talk about China, because this ties in very much with what you just said. What currently is the Chinese regime doing that we might consider unethical in regards to uh, genetic research. I know they've been yeah. investing a lot mm -hmm. of money into that. Yeah, so let, first let's talk about what they're, uh, what they're doing. Uh, because the Chinese government, to its credit, recognizes, like the United States government recognizes, um, that genetics and biotechnology is going to be incredibly important for the future of medicine and even for the future, uh, future of national competitiveness. And that's why, both in China and the United States, there are massive precision medicine initiatives. So uh, precision medicine is the recognition that in the future, unlike the general medicine that we have today, that if somebody has cancer, you get chemotherapy, and you don't know until you um, have that treatment whether you're the kind of person who would respond to that kind of treatment. With precision medicine, your uh, genetic code, your uh, sequenced genome will be the foundation of your medical record. And so before you try anything, we'll know a little bit more about are you the kind of person who would respond to this kind of treatment So it's or like custom-tailored. Exactly. Personalized medicine, that's exactly the point. And it will be a different model for how we treat, but also for how we develop new treatments, including, uh, including drugs, and how we test. 
So, so there's a lot that's very good in what China and, and the United States and others are doing to invest in the realization of this future of, of precision uh, medicine and biotechnology and genetic technologies that have the potential uh, to help everybody. The danger, though, is that these tools are extremely powerful. So these same tools that can allow us to live longer, healthier, more robust lives can also be used to create dangerous bioweapons. They can be used uh, to uh, interfere uh, with the human germline, the heritable, our heritable genetics. And that doesn't mean that it's always wrong, but there needs to be some kind of ethical standard so we can make big decisions. If we're, if we're changing um, the nature of our children or our children's children, we need to have a context for thinking about it. And the fear uh, that many people, myself included, have about China is that there's a massive pressure to move forward very aggressively, which is not necessarily bad. And there are even some decent laws, but there's a Wild West environment and a Wild West culture where people uh, are taking some very big risks and the controls, uh, on one hand, the controls uh, to establish parameters around those risks aren't fully established. And at the same time, there's a tremendous pressure uh, to continually have advances, to continually break new grounds, to in some ways bring glory to the state. So what are the implications of China's genetic rise? Well, on one hand, it's good, uh, because I always say that with China uh, engaging in so much intellectual property theft, it's almost a double tax against the rest of the world. On one hand, uh, China has been stealing intellectual property from the rest of the world. On the other hand, all of these brilliant creative people in China, rather than creating something new, are putting a lot of energy into stealing and adapting somebody else's thing. And so I think that the more that China's brain power is deployed on doing new things, solving new problems, in my mind, that's a much better allocation of that very important uh, resource. So if there are more people in, in China who are working at the frontiers of genetic science, I think that's a, that's a plus. Um, but the, the, it will be very important that we are all talking to one another so we don't get in difficult situations where uh, we are moving in different directions, whether in, in, particularly when there are big ethical issues at play that, um, that could influence our future evolution as a species. Well, then that gets into the issue of national security. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a national security risk for the U.S. in any of this? Different societies will have different views on how to apply these genetic uh, technologies. And so it could be that there will be countries, and let's just say, for example, that the United States is one, maybe Vatican City will be uh, another, um, where we collectively aren't comfortable uh, with germline heritable genetic uh, mutation, of particularly of unborn babies. And so we draw that line. But it could be that other societies, and let's just take China as one potential example, are comfortable with it. And they're saying, well, wait, we can use these technologies. We can eliminate uh, genetic diseases. Uh, we can may maybe at some point in the future engineer people to be smarter or more uh, resistant to disease or, or something else. So if that were to happen, what would we do? What would the country that says well, we don't want to do it do? Would we ban people from those other countries from coming here, from procreating with our citizens? Would we um, do genetic tests of everybody entering the country? And you could see how with, with genetically modified crops, which aren't even that bad for you, how people have gotten so up in arms. People are destroying property, destroying people's fields. And what would people do in that kind of situation. So there's, this is, it's not just a China-US issue. It's a global issue, but there's a real uh, potential tinderbox. Now, I read your book, uh, The Genesis Code, where mm -hmm. you talk a lot about these issues. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm a huge science fiction fan. Great. This really holds up there. Good. But you said it in the very near future, only right. 2020, right? That's 2023. Oh, 2023. Yeah. Yeah. So that's only a few years away. Why yeah. did you set it so close to today. Yeah. Well, the reason is um, I write science fiction not so that people can not think, but so that people will really think about the implications for today. Yeah. And so um, I felt like, you know, you, somebody goes and sees wonderful science fiction like Star Wars, 
But they're not thinking, oh, geez, if I have a Wookiee at home, like, where is he going to sleep? It's just, it's, and it's what not, a droid race. Exactly. But what I wanted is for people to read this book and say, hey, this world feels very, very familiar. And these issues, on some ways, they feel far off, but in other ways, they feel like they're just right here. So is China genetically engineering babies? No. Not to my knowledge. Not to my knowledge. Yeah. Are they in a position where this is something they could start doing in the near future? Well, certainly uh, China and Chinese companies are doing a lot of research, uh, like uh, people in the United States and elsewhere are, on understanding the genetic fingerprint, if that's the right word, um, of all kinds of traits, including, including intelligence. At BGI Shenzhen, they have a thing called the Cognitive Genomics Initiative, where they're really trying to understand um, what makes up, what genetic combinations make up extremely high intelligence. Whether once they and we all understand that, uh, China would be in a position uh, to use embryo selection to select uh, people who are likely to have higher IQs. I mean, we, I don't, nobody knows the answer to that question, but when we look at, at China's recent history, um, you could at least suggest, believe that there could be an openness or a willingness uh, to do that. Um, China was, is very comfortable with population engineering uh, through the one-child policy, with environmental, significant environmental engineering, the South to North Water Diversion Program, Three Gorges uh, Dam, willing to take uh, children away from their families to place them in the Olymp their Olympic sports schools for the glory of the state. So if there was this technology, when, if and when this technology matures to a point where it could be used for uh, population enhancement, um, would China or other countries be open to that? I think the answer to that is, is potentially yes. So it's the question of what would uh, genetically engineered super babies mm -hmm. have on the world? Well, certainly super babies is the future of our species, and some individuals, groups, countries will opt out, and some individuals, groups, countries will opt in. Um, but in my view, it is inevitable that we will be using these technologies first to eliminate disease, but over time to select for perceived positive traits. And so if the United States uh, continues to have, say, moratoriums on some of this technology mm -hmm. while China continues to advance along these lines, what could the potential consequences be for this country? As genetic technologies mature, different countries will come to different conclusions about how they'd like to use them. Uh, if a country opts out, there may be consequences for competitiveness. And if a country opts in, it may face challenges that we don't even understand because we would be, they would be messing with a very complex uh, system. So there will be huge implications. And whether it's the United States and China or any other combination of entities, this is going to be a huge issue moving forward. All right. Well, Jamie, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, once again, the book is Genesis Code. There's a sequel out now uh, called Eternal Sonata. If you are interested in reading the book, we provided a link below where you can buy the Genesis Code. Uh, I do recommend it. It's a fantastic book. Jamie, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Again. Thank you.